This week on Christian World News, a dictator out of control. Turkey's President Erdogan wants to rebuild an Islamic kingdom. Why many fear President Trump will not stand in his way. Plus, the hidden church in the middle of an Islamist enclave. Christian, Christians struggle to survive or escape. And waiting for lost loved ones. Deadly earthquakes took their homes as every day passes their fear. They fear they have lost much more. Welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm George Thomas. We begin overseas, where the question is, who will stop Turkey's President Recep Erdogan? Many had hopes that President Trump would call Erdogan to account for atrocities against civilians and, civil, and against civil, civilians and religious minorities in northeast Syria. Hundreds of thousands have fled their homes as Turkish-backed jihadist troops attack their towns and villages. But far from criticizing Erdogan, President Trump had this to say of the Islamic dictator and his invasion. I'm a big fan of the president, I have to tell you that. Today, the ceasefire continues to hold, and I know that the ceasefire, while complicated, is moving forward and moving forward at a very rapid clip. As President uh, CBN News has reported, there is no ceasefire in northeastern Syria. Leaders expressed disappointment over President, uh, President Trump's remarks there. Erdogan has been called the sultan of 21st century Turkey. He's been given more power than any other democratically elected leader in modern Turkey. And as Dale Hurd tells us, Turkey's new sultan does exactly what he wants. Many believe he would like to revive the old Ottoman Empire, and his erratic behavior has many nations asking if he is a friend or foe. He once wanted to join the European Union, but this week threatened to flood the EU with millions of Syrian refugees if any EU nation dare call his invasion of Syria an invasion. He's been a trading partner with Israel, and yet a Turkish newspaper aligned with Erdogan's party has suggested the Islamic world form a giant army to attack the Jewish state. And as a NATO ally of the United States, he essentially kidnapped American pastor Andrew Brunson on trumped-up spy charges and used him as a bargaining chip. He is an Islamist president with an unprecedented amount of power. After the failed July 2016 coup against him, he launched a nationwide crackdown, arresting more than 50,000 people in the armed forces, police, judiciary, education, and media. He has said he wants to raise a generation of pious Muslims and has vowed to turn the historic Hagia Sophia church and museum into a mosque again as the supreme symbol of his revival of the Ottoman Empire. George, let's go a little deeper now yeah. into Turkey's ambitions and President Erdogan specifically. Um, how did Turks react to yeah. his Islamic ambitions? Well, it's a it's a mixed uh, it's a mixed bag because if you look at Turkey today, it really straddles uh, east and west. You have uh, there's half the country. If you take the Bosphorus, the famous Bof Bosphorus River that divides literally divides uh, Turkey into uh, the west. Uh, the eastern side wants closer ties with Russia, with Iran. Uh, the western side wants closer ties with the United States, and so you have this dichotomy. There is clearly uh, Erdogan enjoys widespread popularity, but in the big cities of, uh, of Turkey, it's a mixed bag. There are those who are very concerned that he wants to turn the clock back on this nation. Remember, this is the land of Ataturk, and Ataturk had, had a very secular, even though he was Muslim, had, uh, had a secular mindset, had a, 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 an idea where, that, where Islam and secularism, Islam and democracy can coexist. Uh, and today, Erdogan wants to change that. He wants Wants to change the Islamic landscape, the religious landscape of Turkey, and and mind you, just a few months ago, a few weeks ago, there were critical elections in the capital city and in Istanbul, and Erdogan lost in a massive way, and so that's a, a, a sort of a signal to his party that this idea to uh, to Islamize the entire country is not going to necessarily work. 
President Trump praises him, has invited him to the White That's House. Right, yeah. Is Erdogan an honest partner, though, in the war against terror? Very, very big question to be asked. Uh, in fact, I hope the president did ask uh, uh, Recep Erdogan about this. Why? Because uh, Tur Turkey managed to allow close to about 40,000 Islamic jihadists to cross the border from his country into Syria to fight the civil war that raged for over six years in that country. How is that possible? The, the recent capture of uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, he had a tunnel that was just a few kilometers from the Turkish border. The president of the United States need to, needs to ask this major NATO ally, are you in this war against Islamic radicalism or are you fueling it? George, what about the Christians in Turkey? What about the church there? Yeah. Uh, how are they handling this? It's been, it's been tough. Uh, there's been a lot of crackdown on foreign missionaries working in the country. The local uh, church, uh, made up um, primarily of Muslim-born uh, background uh, Turks, they are enjoying some semblance of peace and not a lot of persecution. But it is the uh, overseas Christians that have been working there for a very, very long time that continue to face the, the crackdown of the government. All right. Thanks so much for your insights. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, terrorists in Gaza rained down hundreds of rockets on Israeli civilians this week. Emily Jones is with us from Jerusalem to tell us more about Israel's response and the Christians caught in between. Thanks, George and Wendy. Welcome to Jerusalem for this Inside Israel report, where we tell you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Terrorists in Gaza rained down hundreds of rockets on Israeli civilians over the last week, sending entire cities to their bomb shelters. The rockets were in retaliation for Israel assassinating a senior member of the Islamic Jihad terror group. Israel responded to the shower of rockets with dozens of airstrikes on terror positions in Gaza. At least 34 Palestinians, most of whom belonged to terror groups, died from Israel's airstrikes. No Israelis were killed by the rockets. A group you almost never hear about in conflicts just like these are Gazan Christians. With less than 1,000 Christians remaining in Gaza, many face intense persecution from Hamas's radical ideology. I spoke to a Christian organization that's working to relocate four Christian families from Gaza to a better life in the West Bank. The Gaza Exodus campaign is an initiative that we're running here at the Philos Project to help any Christians, Palestinian Christians who live in Gaza, uh, who want to leave, to, to leave. And we want Palestinian Christians to be able to stay in the land, but they need to do so uh, in a situation of safety. And right now, the Christians in Gaza are absolutely the most uh, endangered Christians living in the Holy Land. To find out more about this initiative, go to philosproject.org. Turkey's President Erdogan recently met with President Trump at the White House. The meeting comes amid Turkey's invasion in northeast Syria. Trump praised Erdogan for agreeing to a ceasefire, but Christians on the ground had a very different message. Under the pretext of fighting against the Kurds, a lot of churches have been targeted and destroyed, and many Christians were forcibly displaced from their hometowns. Turkey has recruited jihadist mercenaries to fight the Kurds in northeast Syria. Eyewitnesses say these fighters are behind the deliberate targeting of Christians. Thousands of Jews from around the world continue to pour into Israel to make the Jewish state their home. According to official statistics, more than 28,000 new immigrants arrived in Israel between January and October this year. These Jews are coming from 40 different countries, anywhere from Brazil to Thailand. I'm always excited when I see new immigrants coming on Aliyah to Eretz Israel, to the ancient homeland. Many see their arrival as the fulfillment of God's word when he said he would gather Israel from the four corners of the earth and plant them in their land. You can see stories just like these this week in our Jerusalem Dateline program. That's it for Inside Israel. Wendy and George, back to you. Thank you, Emily. Coming up, hoping against hope as Christian ministries deliver love and relief. These quake victims are waiting for a miracle. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. The Bible tells us that there's great power in God's Word. Hearing, speaking, and obeying the Word of God will transform your life. That's why I've recorded the Transforming Word, Volume 3, Proverbs, Verses of Wisdom, Favor, and Anointing. The Transforming Word, Volume 3, will deepen your faith 
and help you discover the promises God has for you. I encourage you to listen to these verses often and say them aloud with me. You will find honor, guidance, favor, and the wonderful abiding presence of the Lord. Let the powerful Word of God transform your heart, mind, and life. Get the Transforming Word Volume 3 Audio CD and the Three Blessings DVD. Call now or go to CBN.com. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 930 as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 9.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Christian World News. Pope Francis touched on a hot topic while speaking at the Vatican this week. Francis is demanding Facebook, Apple, Google, and other tech companies urgently take measures against pornography. He told a conference of religious leaders and tech representatives that it's no longer acceptable to merely follow the law in monitoring online content because technology is outpacing regulation. He's urging the tech giants to remove child porn from the web and to prevent children from accessing pornography online. A pagan deity of child sacrifice is on display in Rome as part of a celebration of the Carthaginian culture. It's Moloch, the pagan god who required children to be tossed into his fiery belly as an act of worship. The statue similar to this one is on display at the Roman Colosseum where Christians were slaughtered in ancient Rome. LifeSite News uh, reports it isn't uh, a welcome sight for Christians and is considered a mockery of the martyrdom of believers during biblical times. This weekend marks one year since the death of missionary John Cow. You may remember that he was trying to reach people on the isolated island of North Sentinel between India and Southeast Asia. The North Sentinelese are known for a complete lack of contact with the outside world. Authorities in the region believe that the islanders shot and killed Cal when he tried to approach them with the help of local fishermen. Cal's mission agency, All Nation, says they're honoring Cal's by, Cal by celebrating his commitment to take the gospel to all people and encouraging others to do the same. After a string of strong earthquakes in the southern Philippines left thousands of residents homeless, CBN's Operation Blessing is providing much-needed relief. That's right. The Superbook team has also joined them to bring hope to the displaced children and their families. Our Lucille Toulousen has the story. Bianca Maberas was in school when she suddenly felt the ground start shaking violently. My classmates and I ran outside. I was scared because the earthquake was very strong. I'm so sad because our house was badly damaged and Papa said we can't live there anymore. Bianca and her family now live in an evacuation center, along with thousands of displaced families forced to endure the discomforts of living in makeshift tents. The situation is different for eight-year-old Raymark and his two brothers. They lost their parents when the quake triggered a landslide that buried them on the rubber tree plantation where they were working. Now their grandmother takes care of them. Every day, I still wait for my son and my daughter-in-law to come home, hoping they are still alive. Their sons miss them so much. Operation Blessing reached out to these mountain villages to provide food for the earthquake survivors, medical care, and trauma counseling. Thank you for your help and for your prayers. I am trusting God that He will help me raise my three grandsons. In the midst of disasters, it's the children who are the most affected. They get sick from exposure to hot and cold weather, and they share the burden that their parents are carrying in the difficult situation. 
That is why Superbook came along with Operation Blessing to minister to the children. This is the first time that Superbook is running their disaster relief program and it's their hope that these kids will be able to overcome the trauma that they experienced during the earthquake. We are using the story of Job and telling kids how in spite of all the disasters that Job went through, he still was faithful to God and how God restored him. And that's the plan of God, even though we go through times of disaster in our lives, that God's power cannot be limited by our situation. Bianca was among the kids who watched Job's story. She says she learned a lot from Job. Like Job, I am also undergoing trials. We lost our house. But after watching the story of Job, I am not sad anymore. I can pray to God and He will help me. You know, the salvation poem of Superbook in Tagalog, it translates to, help me, Lord, start over again. And I offer my life to you. That's the prayer of these children, that the Lord will help them start over again. So it's a blessing for me to see how the Lord uses Superbook um, to help people who have lost everything and even lost family members and for them to sing that to the Lord and ask Him to start over again. I'm sure the Lord is listening and He will be faithful to answer their prayers. Thank you, Superbook, for coming to our village. You made us very happy. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, North Cotabato, Philippines. Thanks, Lucille. Well, coming up, 70 families, hundreds of autistic orphans, and the great big God that brought them all together. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? CBN presents The Transforming Word, Volume 3. Those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. The wise inherit honor. Take a journey through the book of Proverbs with Pat Robertson. In this dynamic audio CD, you'll learn biblical principles for gaining wisdom, favor, and anointing. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll receive a DVD of Pat's teaching, The Three Blessings. Call now to get The Transforming Word, Volume 3, and The Three Blessings today. Welcome back. November is Adoption Month, and in one small village in China, 70 families set out to help children with autism in a nearby orphanage. Yeah, it's fantastic. As I found out in a visit to this village, it started with a simple message from the Bible about caring for widows and orphans. Take a look. For 18 years, Robert Glover has had a dream to see a million Chinese children moved from orphanages into local, loving families. That dream is becoming a reality in a corner of China's Hunan province. And it was just so remarkable. You know, what was going on in this village was the dream um, that we had been anticipating. It all started a few years back when families in Yangjai village 
set out to change the lives of children in a nearby orphanage. And I think the amazing thing is they started to really go deep and study the Bible, and they, they found this bit about widows and orphans, and it really just impacted them. And these weren't ordinary children. The children had a, had a very tough life before they were found by the policemen or be collected to the orphanage. They'd been abandoned, and you imagine being abandoned in a city at a very young age and not having anyone to fend for you. And we know where the children have maternal deprivation, they will develop sometimes mental illness, physical illness, and even die. These children lived in a Chinese government institution. They had the infrastructure and all the facilities, but... They're not able to get any kind of family love or care. Lover's team discovered something special about the village. People here, they give their real heart to the children. They love the children, and they support each other. And that became evident when 70 families became foster parents to 170 children. All the children were placed with this village uh, from the Kuming orphanage, and up to 99% have difficulties, physically and mentally. That didn't matter to the villagers. You see, the majority of Yang Jai is Christian, and the families knew that this was the right thing to do. It is quite incredible because I think most of us, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we think about is ourselves. These people, they get up and they think of these children, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. Their act of love had a profound impact, bringing the community together like never before. This is the dream that came, has come true. To see, you know, not only the mothers and fathers, but the brothers and sisters, the uncles and aunties, and then the extended family, the whole community come together. Glover believes what families in Yangjai are doing should be the model for taking care of orphaned and vulnerable children. And all those people working in institutions are going to suddenly think, oh, I'm going to lose my job. So there's going to be a bit of a fight and a battle. The better way is to say, let's work within the institution and retrain some of the staff to move with the children into the community as support workers. Glover is the founder of Care for Children, an organization that teaches government-run institutions how to move children from the orphanage into local families. He says he's simply practicing a biblical model. And we just come back simply to that point. God made the family for children. So far, Care for Children has placed more than 300,000 Chinese children in families across the country. The government has realized, the academics have realized, um, a lot of the NGOs are here. I think it's the church that's behind. The Christian church needs to wake up. In 2003, the Chinese government invited Glover and his family to move to Beijing so they could introduce this family-based care throughout the country. As a result, the government took a historic step in 2014 by changing legislation to state that family placement is a positive alternative to institutional care. I shed a tear because it took 17 years for them to change that, that legislation. It took lots of children's transformations to, 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 to change that legislation. And I think that is you know, phenomenal because that's not about me. That's about a faithful God. China says it has 576,000 orphans, but outside groups put the number closer to a million. Glover says many of the families taking in orphans are Christians. The biggest um, Christian revival in world history is happening now in China. And so as that's happening and we're placing children in the family, it's not surprising that the, the families that are, are coming forward are the Christians. For the 70 foster families in Yangjai village, the experience has been life-changing. For the children, it has been equally transforming.
，我爱爸爸妈妈。Glover says her smiles here remind him of the dream God put in his heart to help transform the lives of a generation of children across China. You know, what we're giving these, these children is an opportunity to have that identity and security and love and nurture in, in a family and a community. Is so heartwarming, yeah. so touching. And, and, the, and the point here is that they, they want these kids not to be in orphanages, in institutions, that they belong in the family. Children belong in the family. And that's what's happening around the world. And that's what CBN and our Orphans Province are doing as well. I love it. Thank yep. you so much. Well, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating fight. Jenna Browder, Knows his words carefully, Ben and Kennedy, Plan to join him, and Amber Strong, For impeachment grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. On the Home Front, Tuesday morning at 10:30. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Pat Robertson records this dynamic audio CD, The Transforming Word, Volume 3, available now. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way. I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. Finally this week, the American Bible Society has given away, get this, 6,000 Bibles around the world to Kanye West fans in less than two weeks for absolutely no charge free. After the megastar released his new album, Jesus is King, the society saw a large spike in Google searches like, what does Kanye believe? And it promised to send a free Bible to any curious Kanye fan. At first, the offer was for 1,000 free Bibles until October 30th, but the demand was so great, the society has extended the offer until November 22nd. The Lord works in mysterious ways Isn't is all I can beautiful? say. That's awesome. awesome. Really awesome. is. Yeah. And who knows that the Lord, many people may come into the kingdom because of uh, his testimony. Absolutely. God will use the foolishness of the world to confound the wise. Thank you very much. I'm folks, a prime example. come on now. <laughs> you, you and me both. Well, folks, that is it for this week's edition of Christian World News. Until next week, from all of us here, goodbye and God bless you.